Hey everyone, Ryan here. In this video, we'll take a look at creating an action menu in our gallery. So you'll see on the upper right hand side where I have this ellipsis. When it's selected, we will actually show this action menu here. In this case, I have three um, action menu items, but this could be expanded to like four or five if you need to. And if you select any of these items, you can of course trigger your logic there, and then it will disappear. Also, if a user clicks on it, selects off, or clicks on it, selects another row item, it will then disappear. So it's very dynamic, it provides a better sleek um, interface for your users. So let's look at the current layout. Uh, you'll see here that in my gallery, I have a description column and we could put an ellipsis right beside that. And when it's selected, we can shrink that description column so that we can show all the buttons available. So let's go and add that icon. So it's actually called the more icon here. So we drag and drop it here. We'll set it to 20 by 20 and we will put it just beside and over beside this column. So once that's in there, what we will do is go to the on select property and we are going to update a couple of variables here. We'll create some new ones. So we'll get rid of the select parent. We don't need that to, we don't need to trigger any code that's on the select of a row, we'll have specific um, formulas here. So we'll update the context and it's going to be action menu selected and we'll set that to true. And what we will do is we'll set another variable to identify the record ID. So here, um, so we'll say record ID and we'll set it to this item, which means this row, and we'll set it to the uh, GUID of the account. And if you're using SharePoint, it would probably be like an ID instead. So for sure, SharePoint lists, you would use ID. So once that is complete, what we could do is go to the width property here on the description. And what we could do here is to say if action menu selected and record ID equals this item dot account. What we're going to do is we're going to shrink the width. Otherwise we'll set it to the default. So that way, whenever that ellipsis is selected and we're in the current row, it will make it smaller. Otherwise it'll be the default width. And what we could do is actually copy this because we no longer want the ellipsis to appear when it's selected. So we can go and go to the visible property and say that if it's been selected, we will hide it. Otherwise, it's always visible to the user. So we press play here and we select it. You will see that the description size shrinks and the ellipsis is gone. So what we could do now is add a image and what I use is image, you know, just because you have more options to grab images online at the various icon websites, um, just to show like an edit, copy and delete button. And then we'll have a button overlay so that the user can see when they're hovering over it, it's, it's slightly grayed, so it's easy to use. So what we will do here is we'll go to the image properties here, and I have a few here. So we'll go to the edit property here. I think that's the wrong one. So we'll use this one here. So it's a nice clean design. And what we'll do here is we'll change around the, the width here and the height. So we'll change that to about as a 20 by 20, and we'll go a little bit lower. So about 10 or so, and we'll bring it over slightly. So we'll go about here. So what I'll do is I'll copy this and I'll paste and we'll do the same thing for the next icon and we'll just change it to the different icon. So it's going to be a copy icon and then we'll do it one more time for the delete icon. Okay. So we'll do that here. So, once those have been added, these are the three icons we want to appear when um, you know the ellipsis is selected. And we want that button overlay so it's obvious what's being 
selected for the user. Because with images, you don't have those indicators like you do with um, icons that are built into um, Power Apps. So what we're going to do here is we're going to just change around the height and width and um, yeah, just make it a bit cleaner uh, looking. So we'll use 30 by 30 for the height and width. And what we will do is remove any text that we have here. And we're going to lay it over the first button here. So we'll just say roughly here approximately. And we have to change some parameters on the color scheme here. So we'll use a transparent color. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use a change around the hover fill and the pressed fill. So we'll go here. And what I use is a slate gray. So 128, 128, 128.1. So it's like only showing some transparency there. And same thing for the pressed fill. We'll do that as well. And then for the border color, we will change that around and we'll just do a solid color. And we're going to change the thickness from two to one. Okay, so that's what it looks like right now. If I press Alt and I hover, you see how it gets highlighted very nicely. So what we want to do here is change around some of the columns or sorry, the, the corners. So right now they're all rounded corners. So we could change the top right to be zero and the bottom right to be zero as well so that there'll be there'll be true corners there. And then what we could do is copy this, paste it. We'll just drag it over here. Okay, we might just have to change around the height a bit. Uh, so we'll go up one pixel. And then what we could do here is go to advance and this will have no corners. So no rounded corners. It'll just be all perfectly straight. So we see that here and then we'll copy this. And for the last one that we'll put up right against here, we are going to have top right and top uh, bottom right to be 10. And then from here, um, it's pretty simple. All we, what we have to do is just make sure everything is aligned properly. So if I go back to the six controls I have here, I can go to my second image. And what I could do is just move it over slightly. So it's going to be probably about 75, roughly. We just want to get it nice and centered for that, um, in that underneath that button there. And same thing for the delete button as well. So we'll go over uh, probably about 20 at this point. Yeah, that squares up nicely. And you see how that button right now, it's a little bit over too much. So what we will do is move it up slightly to be five like the others, and then move it over to probably about three pixels around there. So that looks good. So with the delete icon, again, I'll just move it over three as well. So it's all nicely aligned. So we press play here. You'll see how when this pops up, it nicely appears when the user hovers over it. Now, we only want this to appear in certain situations. So what we want to do is select all six of these items here, group it together. And again, you know, this is just three options. You can have four, five, however many you want. It's, it's very flexible. Um, and what we'll say is this is the action menu. And then from here, what we're going to do is we're going to add some of that logic that we had here previously. And what we're going to say for the visible property here is that if it's selected, we will show it. Otherwise, it will be hidden. So you'll see it disappears from all the remaining rows, but only appears in the first row. Now, what we want to do is to actually hide it when a button is selected. So to do that, we will go to the on select property here in our property window. And what we will do is we will actually update a couple of variables here and I'll just copy and paste them in. 
Okay, so what we will do is we'll add two variables here. So one is we're going to say which button menu uh, you know was selected, and we're going to say it's the edit. So we where you have a little uh, label down here just to let us know what's been selected. Otherwise, and it will be set to false. Okay, so we'll copy this with the other buttons as well. And so we're going to say this one is copy. And the last one will be delete. So we'll select that, paste, delete. So now if I go press play and I click on it, you'll see how it disappears. And you will see here how it's now edit. If I select it again, it appears. I have the option for delete and it's available here. So what I can also do is if I select here and go to the next row and click the ellipsis, you see how it appears there. So it's very dynamic that way. And then lastly, what you can do is if you select off of the gallery here, you'll see how it disappears. And the reason why is I have some logic already in place on the row to say that if it's selected, so not the ellipsis, just the row, we will hide the action menu and we, we set this you know, to none at the bottom here just to show that it's been triggered. So if I press play and I select this and I click down, it disappears. So it's a very nice, simple logic to build into your galleries, very easy for users to manipulate. And hopefully this helps you on building more you know, sleek designs in your, in your app.